It's a beautiful day here in the mountains of southern Appalachia. I'm going to do my first garden tour today. I'm so excited about how the garden's looking. Everything is up and growing and um, hopefully in a few weeks we'll be enjoying some of the wonderful things it's going to produce. We started out kind of on the dry side that first week that we planted our seeds. Didn't rain not one day, which is usually is really unusual for this area of Appalachia, especially in the springtime. But um, of course I convinced Matt to water the garden, which is something we rarely do. But we, when we do, we hand water, so it's kind of a, a huge task. But as soon as we did that, the rain came back. So we've had rain pretty much every every day or every other day since then. And the, every, the whole world around me, as you can probably see in the background, is just turned green and lush again. It's amazing the growth that happens in the mountains of Appalachia during this time of the year. Uh, it almost becomes overwhelming by summer's end. And then, of course, during the winter, it all goes away. This part of the garden is one part that we're changing this year. For the past two years, this is the, the trellis that we've grew our rattlesnake beans on. And this year we've put them up front and back here in the back, we're doing some greasy beans. And they're not, they've not come up as good as I would have hoped, although there's another one right there coming up. So maybe they're, and there's another one. They're just slower than the rattlesnake beans. Um, if you can remember what these look like, kind of sparse but coming up slowly then we can compare them to the greasy or excuse me to the rattlesnake beans in the front you'll be really amazed on this end they look a little bit better and those are also those are a case knife greasy i'm really excited about growing those for the first time the true purpose for this trellis when we first put it up was for this grapevine there's one here and there's one over on the other end of it Though they're not old enough yet to produce grapes. I don't see any blooms or any grapes on them this year, but hopefully in the years to come, we'll have them and they will likely take this over and I won't be able to plant beans underneath anymore. But for now, that works out okay. Up there behind the beans, those that's our blackberries. There's none of them ripe yet. Uh, I was afraid they wouldn't do as good as last year, but they are covered with blackberries, so maybe this will be another great blackberry year for us. Looks like I need to do some serious weeding up there, though. This part of the garden, kind of the herb bed that Katie and I planted together, and then our, our beds over here and our grow bags is really just thriving, really doing great. I'm so excited about it. I'm especially excited um, about, I'm excited about all of it. I'm going to say that 40,000 times while I'm doing this video, uh, but I really am that excited. But the uh, nasturtiums that I planted, I loved them last year, how I planted them in the edges of the beds, and they just kind of flowed out. Um, and they're doing that way this year already. They're already doing good, and I know they'll they'll continue to good th do good throughout the summer like they did last year. And they're just so lovely. The leaves and the and the flowers are just beautiful. And everything back here is so far doing really really good. Since Katie and I planted the herb bed, things are really growing. There's some dill trying to bloom. I've got cilantro back there blooming. Also, you can see Katie's onions. She said she's gonna have an onion forest. Well, she's right. They all they all come up everywhere she'd put them. All the other herbs too are, they just took right off once we put them in here. This is chamomile. I hope it does good. Here's some lavender, some rosemary back there. We did plant some, that's some basil, I can tell by looking. And I hope, I'm pretty sure this is lemon balm. So I lost my lemon balm when we um, got rid of the other herb bed or it got demolished uh, so I hope that will that will take its place and then this is hyssop I've never grown that before but it is such a lovely plant I, I don't know if it'll bloom if it does that's just going to make it even prettier but it's so so lovely the leaves are pretty and it's kind of different shades of green on it so I really like it so far and I hope that I'm able to use it either medicinally or to cook with so here's one of my wonderful nasturtiums that I'm, I'm so pleased with. Their leaves are just so lovely. You can see they're beginning to, beginning to bloom down in there. And they are totally edible too, so you can certainly eat them. My only problem was I planted it too close to the um, marigold that I had down in there and it's kind of covered it up. 
The one back here is really, really doing good too in the same way. Here's some of our purslane that comes back and pretty soon we can start harvesting it because you can see how, how large it's getting back there. It's always a nice sight to see, a, see the bees in the garden. That's a borage plant and it's pretty. We don't really do anything with it, although it is a medicinal plant and you can also, it's edible, but I just love it. I, it's, I've been growing them here for a few years now and they kind of reseed their self. You can see the bee really enjoys it too. Up here in the front, I planted a whole row of marigolds. I'm really going to test that theory if marigolds uh, help repel pests and deer and all that. I've read good accounts, then I've read accounts where people say, no, the bugs still eat their stuff and the deer still eat their stuff, but I'm trying. So on this cattle panel, we've planted one little part of like cantaloupes, muskmelons, some people call them, and then also cucumbers on the other side. Uh, looks like something has something's happened to that one. So hopefully, I don't know what could, could have been. I don't see really any bug damage. Sometimes plants die and, and it's a hard time trying to figure out why. And then you can see some tomatoes that are just volunteers kind of growing there. I've probably got too many. I've probably left too many tomatoes because here's, here's another volunteer and then there's one back there. So I'll probably have to pull some of those up. Back there with the stakes is some of our peppers and we already have peppers on most all the plants, which is really exciting. On the cattle panels over here, again, I've got the same problem with the tomatoes. <laughs> you can see here's, here's one that's blooming down there. There's one, there's one. I've got a great old big one right there. I'm gonna have to remove some of them. And then under the, the trellis or the cattle panel is where all my cucumbers are, or the most of them. I've got some on the other one, but these are cucumbers. I'm so excited about them. I am gonna have to probably do away with some of those tomatoes though. But I've got plenty. It's just always hard to pull them out when they're volunteers and they look so, so wonderful. But I do, I've got plenty of tomatoes and this will be the only cucumbers. Well, I do have cucumbers in one other place, but still I'll probably have to pull some of those up. Our pepper plants are on the stakes back there too. And we've also got some of those have got peppers on them. Here's some of the purple ones that Corey started from seed, shared with me. So, and we've been we've been eating these, or I should say, Corey has. She got several of them yesterday and was eating on them, and she said they're really good. This is a Carolina Wonder. I just pulled one off that was rotted on the end. Sometimes things like that happen, but you can see there's some little ones um, coming on. And this one down here, this is a, I'm trying to see what that little red one is. I don't know exactly what that is, why it's red already, or if that, one's, that one looks like something's been eaten on it. But these are shishitos, and we really like those, and they do really good for us. It's been kind of a cool spring, so these peppers have not, they've not grown a whole lot since we planted them, but when really hot weather gets here, I know that they're just going to flourish. I've really enjoyed this little area like I did last year, trying to kind of make it pretty outside the greenhouse. This container kind of has a interesting story. It's a great old big container, you can see. And it blew off the, I guess blew off someone's truck or something and was in the yard at, at Miss Cindy's. And we set it out thinking somebody might come back and get it, but they never did. So I finally said, well, I'm gonna take it home and plant in it. So I have a marigold back there. And then this is lamb's quarter. I said that I, I didn't know if I had any growing here, even though it grows wild, and a dear friend sent me some seeds, so now I have it growing here, and my hope is that it, I can, once it goes to seed, I can kind of spread it around and just have it growing in all my garden beds, because it is edible, and it's tasty. I've already tasted it. So this is calendula, continues to bloom. Isn't that an orange? That orange is pretty. Back there, I've got the petunias from Satterfields. This is some mint here. It's getting ready to bloom, actually. I'm gonna bloom. Then in this container back here, I have some more nasturtiums. I have some, some rosemary, 
uh, I'm sorry, some basil and some rosemary, both there. And then I have some thyme up here. It smells so good. So I just love how this how this looked. I liked it last year, so I Corey helped me and I tried to expand it this year. Back here in the back, I have a little aloe plant who doesn't look like he's doing so good, but I think it'll, I'm hopeful he'll come back out. I think I overwatered him when I replanted him from one I had inside. So I hope that, that he'll come back out, but we'll see. I still have the one inside though, so I'm still good on aloe. This year I expanded the little area outside the greenhouse to include the other side of the door too. So I have some mint, I have a nasturtium. Uh, this is some plants that I got from Satterfields. They're really pretty, some little strawberries. And then I've planted calendula in this and you can see it's just now starting to come up. It's a pink calendula instead of the yellow. I also got my horseradish from the Satterfield nursery and you can see something's been eating it. And I see right there what it is. I can see it right there. So I'm gonna have to have to come back out here and put some diatomaceous earth on it or neem oil. Those are the two things that we like to use. Uh, but I will remove that one. Out of all the things we've planted that's come up, this is the area that's not done as good. Uh, back here behind the greenhouse, you can see right here some little, that's a, that's a volunteer from last year, watermelon. But you can see this little mound has something and uh, this mound has something. Those are Mrs. Amerson squash that I can't wait to see. But you can see some of the other, I'm weeding as I go, some of the other ones have not come up. And then what's happened back here is something has ate my seeds. I would say it's a squirrel has come out and dug down into the um, mounds. You can kind of see on that one for sure. And they've, I'm sure my seeds are gone. So I need to, need to try to replant those, but I've not got that done yet. In the front here in these grow bags is our potatoes. You can begin to see they're kind of kind of dying back and kind of looking not as great as they did, but it's 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 about time for them because we planted them like in March. I've got more nasturtiums right here, and this is where my Malabar spinach grows up this. It'll be all the way up the uh, arch by the summer's end, but boy, what a mess I've got in the middle. I've not weeded this. Those are all of Katie's May Pops that she's got planted and they, they reseed themselves. She didn't actually plant them and they need to be cut back and that area needs to be, needs to be weeded desperately. In our grow bags over here near the greenhouse, this is where we've got um, all the kind of tomatoes we wanted to try this year, the ones we just wanted to experiment with and try. So I'm excited about them. And there's tomatoes on pretty much all of them. So hopefully they'll, they'll get to their ripeness and we'll be able to taste them and see if it's something that we, that we want to grow again. You can see some right here on this one. Matt and I like to trim off the lower, um, branches or limbs of the tomato plants. As you can see, we've not done that. We've got like a forest going on. Then we use these clips like this. I'll put a link below, but we use these to kind of um, help hold the tomato plant up on the trellis. It work, they work really well, but that's just something we've not done yet this year. Now this is one we're trying um, for the first time. I wish it was ripe, but it's still hard. And someone told me that they'll turn kind of red on the bottom when they are ripe. But somehow Corey and I got the got them mixed up. We thought this whole bed was Cherokee purple. That's what we always plant here. But we've got three of those little blueberry ones. So we got mixed up on that. Hopefully though, if the other plants do good, we'll still have plenty of Cherokee purple. In this area of the yard, I have my elderberries planted. This is the first year that I think I'm gonna have elderberries. You can look all the way up, that's how tall, how tall the elderberries got. But on the very top there, there is some a little bloom. So hopefully I'll get at least a few berries this year. It'll be my first time having elderberries.
The beds up here are doing really good, as you can see. So in this one, we have some, uh, these are actually old time speckled butter beans on this side. Here's some tomatoes. They've got, you can see there's a little one. They've got tomatoes on them. On this side, these were some peas that we planted in here. Let's we'll see if we can tell what the name, those are red hull peas. These are red hull peas. So some of them are just now coming up too. And the tomato is kind of squishing that one out, but hopefully it'll, it'll catch up and grow above the tomatoes. You can see those are some little, little Tommy toes. This is a, another bean, a butter bean. Here's my volunteer potato and it's blooming. I'm really excited about these on this side, the peas over here. They are Holstein peas. So they look like a little Holstein cow. There's one just coming up, but these others are, are fairly large already. So that's good. Pretty soon they'll reach up here and, and grow up for us, I hope. And here's some peppers. This is a violet pepper that Corey uh, started this year. You can see it's this one's turning turning purple but she was telling me earlier she noticed this one is red so i don't know what that's about that's interesting this one over here is beginning to turn purple too and then this one this is a candy cane pepper that a subscriber shared with us last year and we really liked it so you can kind of see the kind of variegated candy cane look on it Matt and I added these two cattle panels here this year. This is the first time we've had this part of the garden. We've always grown our tommy toes here, but we usually use tomato cages. So this is the first time we've been able to use the cattle panels. We really love them. But again, you can see it's just kind of a forest of tomatoes because we've not done any trimming or any weaving through the um, cattle panels or attaching them yet, but we will. There's some tomatoes up here in these uh, little grow bags. This one I'm excited to try is a, this one over here, whether that's actually part of this one, is one from the Satterfields. So I'm excited about it. But this one got some little blooms, but no tomatoes yet is Sweet 100s, I think is the name of it. And I hear wonderful things about it. And a subscriber sent me those seeds. So I'm excited to try it for the first time. I have planted a succession planting of lettuce in in two of these grow bags. This one is up and doing good, and the other one I planted over there, not one seed has come up so far, so I don't know what's up with that or if I'll have any. And this jungle is our asparagus bed. Asparagus is kind of uh, over. This is, you know, late in the season for it, and it's went to seed, and I'll just leave that there hoping some of those seeds sprout. Right here on the end, I've got some sunflowers. Hopefully they'll, they'll come up and do good for me. They're already up, but they'll continue to grow. And then you can see where we used compost. I have a cabbage and that's some sort of squash or pumpkin. And I didn't plant it. It's just from the compost and I just can't bear to pull it up. So I've, I've left them. And then I see a tomato over there in the other end of the bed. The thing about volunteers like that squash, it might turn out to be a butternut squash. Kind of looks like a Cherokee purple. I mean, not Cherokee purple, sorry. Chambers Creek pumpkin, the leaves kind of variegated. Um, it might be true to that, but it may come up and be some kind of misshapen something. Most of the time it's still edible, even if it is a volunteer, uh, but you just never know till you see what you get. This is a flower bed that Katie and I are really excited about this year. Um, I moved all of the irises that was on one of the videos back in the winter. And I said, of course, we didn't get them all. Well, you can see we didn't. I still need to move more and to move that hosta just so we'd have more room for what we, we want it to be a really a flower garden. Here's some dianthus that I got from the Satterfields. And Katie planted this, this nasturtium, but isn't it a beautiful color? Look at that pink. I've never had a pink one before, so I really am glad Katie found those seeds and planted them. And so it's doing really well. Have some Cosmos. And Katie's, what she's most excited about is this poppy. You can see a, there's a, a seed or a, 
a bloom it just hadn't come out yet it will eventually be seed so she's really excited about that one and keeping a keeping a good eye on it in this end of the bed, we have some more Cosmos, some lamb's ear from the Satterfields. Oh, it's so pretty and so soft. Can't wait for it to bloom. And then also some Yarrow I got from the Satterfields. And I was hoping it would be a different color than the white that we have, and it is. Isn't it beautiful? It's pink. Now you may be wondering what all this stuff is. So that's an, an anemone, September charm, and it is beautiful. It doesn't bloom until September. But I don't know what it is about the last two years. I've had it for literally 15 years. And suddenly in the last two years, it's just kind of took over. So it's almost took over this bed. What I need to do is remove a lot of it and put it up on the bank around my raised beds up there and see if it'll, if it'll take over the bank like it has down here. All the potatoes we planted, except this little patch, were in in one of my grow bags. And you can see this patch is this stand, kind of a stand of uh, potatoes here is done really good. They are kind of starting to flop over and, and die back because again, we planted them in March. This is one of my favorite views of our garden. I've always enjoyed it, but this year it just seems especially pretty. When you look down there, look at the, that's our largest garden area, and you can see the green beans kind of all up like soldiers marching along. You can see, of course, our, our cabbage is covered, and we cover it because of those, like that little worm I just found that's eating my um, horseradish. We cover it to keep the cabbage worms out of it. So that just makes it so much easier. You don't have to worry about putting any kind of pesticide or anything like that on it. That cover keeps the moth or the butterfly or whatever it is, I think it's a moth, from laying their eggs that turn into the larva, that turn into the worm that eats your cabbage. So we don't have to worry about that. That's why we cover it. And then I've got my Thanks to the Satterfields, I've got my long row of marigolds down there. I just think it's such a, just a beautiful uh, view of the garden. It's funny, this time of the year, everything looks really orderly. Not our tomatoes, because we've let them just go wild this year. But things like those beans, they look so orderly. In another three weeks or four weeks or even a month, it'll just look like a jungle down there because they will have met each other over the top. They reach out and hold hands across the aisles, my dear friend Kenneth Roper used to say, uh, and it'll just be a totally different look. There's just really something special about each, each aspect of the garden. Um, beautiful when you first plant the seeds and when they first emerge and then when they're at this stage where you can kind of see them from a distance you can see the seeds are growing and um, and then of course when they do start producing there's just something really lovely about every stage of a garden this is where our more established grapevines are at down here you can see there's some there's some grapes and this grapevine is just loaded loaded with grapes this year so I'm, I'll, be, I'll be excited when those ripen and, and we can use them for jellies and jams and to drink. We like to make grape juice. Now, a lot of people ask me what kind these are, and I don't know, truthfully, I don't have any clue what they are. My, uh, one of Miss Cindy's friends, actually, Solly, he gave them to me years ago, many, many years ago, and he didn't, I'm not sure he even knew what they were, but he gave me a piece of them and I brought them home and uh, Matt and I started them and over the years, they've done really good for us. This is another bed though, below the grapevines that we usually use for peas or beans or something like that. And you can see how terribly weedy it is. Another one that's not been weeded that needs to be. Uh, but I did plant uh, two more grapevines here. This one and another one. It's not doing as good as this one but it's right here. It, it, I thought it was dead, but then it has actually got some leaves on it. But those are both Scoopernong grapes, and I'm so excited about it. Last year was the first year I ever tasted them, and those are by far my favorite grape now. I eat them until my mouth got so sore I could barely chew, and I just kept eating them. They were so good. Uh, my friend Jim Cassida shared them with me. And I was able to, because of the generosity of a friend, get two of them to try myself. So I hope, I know this year they, they likely won't do anything, but I hope that they kind of establish themselves. And by next year, maybe I'll have scoopernongs. Down here, we have two more rows of tomatoes. These are mostly uh, one row 
this is funny, I'll tell you how I know. This row over here is Mountain Princess. And the way that I remembered that was I thought, I didn't mark it. These are the two in Arkansas Traveler that we grow every year. And I thought, now how am I gonna tell which is which to remind myself? And I thought I'll put the Mountain Princess closest. It's in the direction closest to my brother Steve's house. And I thought of my niece April as the Mountain Princess. So those are Mountain Princess. And then on this side are the Arkansas Traveler. And there's tomatoes on both of them. So we're just anxiously awaiting for them to get ripe. It'll be a few more weeks though before they do. So this is a closer view of kind of my, my favorite part of the garden as far as how it looks from up above. And you can see here between the marigolds and the, the white tunnel is the okri. So you can see it's all up. There's a, a long row. I'll have tons of okri and be able to, to share with Granny. I know she'll appreciate that. And then our two rows of rattlesnake beans. I told Matt, I can't believe how great they look, how fast they come up, how fast they're growing. I said, you do know we're gonna be absolutely covered up with green beans. And he said, well, that's, that's a good thing. We love them. I said, well, that's true. We do love them. I was also heartened to see, encouraged to see, on these two last panels of cattle panel, is where we planted some of the ones that we got from Debbie at Bryson uh, Farm Supply. So I'm really excited about them. This little bit right here from there to there is the kind of mystery bean from Cherokee, but it looked like a paint horse if you've seen the video where I talked about them. So I'm so glad that they're up and growing. Uh, some more of the case knife down here, and those are doing way better. Hmm, makes me wonder, maybe it's because they're getting more sunshine than those in the back. And then in the back, some a preacher bean and a lazy wife. I wonder, and I've had other people comment that they think the preacher bean is gonna be very, very similar, if not the same thing as the rattlesnake bean. So we'll just have to wait and see. And you may be wondering, well, Tipper, why do you have two cabbage outside the uh, tunnel there? The day that Matt and I, I covered that and put that on. We were both about wore out and we got all the way to the end and we only liked two covering them. Well, we did have more cloth, but I said, you know what? Let's just leave these two. Let's just leave them and see what happens. Well, you can see one is way larger uh, than the other one. That's one thing. This one, the large one's beginning to head up and they've not been eaten too bad by by bugs so far. I did put diatomaceous earth on both of them. So I'm sure that that's helped some. But um, basically me and Matt was too tired to continue our tunnels, what happened there. So in this area of the garden, this is where we have a couple, we have three kind of short rows of bush beans, the yance bean, and then also a bean that Debbie shared with us. We have my carrots, carrots out through there that I planted a long time ago, seems like, I think it was March, maybe February. And then a few remaining onions that we've not eaten yet. This area is kind of below where those bush beans were. We have some more lettuce that uh, we're still enjoying eating. I ate some of it today for my dinner with a on a sandwich. And um, we have my overgrown flowers that I may never get back into um, shape. Hopefully I will, but I don't know. It's not looking like it so far. And then my squash and zucchini right here that we planted. And there's one, there was two beets. And I said, man, I'm leaving the two beets. So the kind of fluffy thing out there towards the end is a beet. And there was another one, which I don't see now. So it may have even, may not, may just be one beet left now. Another row of onions. Um, and then all of our watermelons and winter squash down through there. And most all of them have come up in this bed because no squirrel has been digging in them or whatever was digging in them out there in the back. So again, it's funny to look at these and they're, they're kind of all neat and bare and you're like, you've got all kinds of room. About July, end of July, this will be a jungle. The vines will have went out into the driveway. They'll be, it'll just be like a huge mess, <laughs> kind of a jungle that's at least waist high of big, huge leaves growing and wonderful goodness hiding underneath them. This past winter, Matt and I really cut back our blueberry bushes. I mean, we cut some drastically back. There's some, that's a dead branch right there. But we cut them back to the point that I wasn't even sure we'd have any blueberries, but we do have blueberries. 
not as many maybe because of the drastic cutback, but, but I feel like it helped the plants overall. And on the ones that we, we cut drastically back like this one that don't have blueberries, what's happening is down here around the roots, there's new plants coming out. So hopefully what we can do is let this one grow and then maybe by next year, actually cut this one completely down, cut it down to the bottom and take it, take it out and let those that are coming up around it grow. Also got some wild blackberries coming up around it. I probably have to remove that one though. I can't have a blackberry patch in the middle of the blueberries. This blueberry is a uh, one that ripens earlier, so you can see they're beginning to beginning to turn color already. The first one that I showed, they won't be ripe until at least uh, end of July, early August. These will be riper sooner. So in these two lower raised beds, that one, the lowest one, there's nothing in it except a, an errant tomato plant that must have been in the compost coming up. And this one right closest to us, there's a marigold and then some onions growing in it. And we'd need to plant something in the back, but we've not done that yet. We'll probably wait and see, you know, maybe if we want to decide we want some extra squash or some more peas or whatever it is. So we'll probably just leave that one like it is for now. In this raised bed, we have more marigolds, more of the onions, more of those red onions. And then back here in the back, these onions actually came from Debbie at Bryson Farm Supply. And I forgot that I had them, but thankfully when I found them, when I was getting out all my other seeds, they were still good and I was able to plant them. In this bed, we have more onions, more strawberry onions. One of the reasons I bought so many of those from the Satterfields was that they heard that they would repel deer. So I don't know, I've not had no deer. I don't know if it's the onion or not, but. And these back here, these little plants, these are a bush cucumber. So interesting, you can still see there's the little, there's the seed on that one. So these are bush cucumbers. Hopefully they'll do good in this raised bed. Over here in this end next to the marigold over there i planted more lettuce and even though we've had a lot of rain none of it has come up i don't see one single little green shoot even though we have had lots of rain this is the raised bed over here that we put in a grow bag on each side and i planted watermelon seeds in them and i was going to say i don't there's not any come up but look right there there is one just now beginning to come up I planted some more sugar babies. And then in this bed, the raised bed, we have more onions. And then we have our Mississippi pink eye, which is a bush pea, a bush pea. Matt and I just loved them last year. We ate them as fast as they would produce. They were just so delicious. We just went crazy over them. I don't know why we've never grown peas before, but now we've fallen in love with them. Another part of our garden that I'm really enjoying this year is my new steps. It's made it so much handier and so much easier to just run down the steps if you're coming around the house, if you're going in the basement, whatever it is that you're doing. I'm excited about the things that are growing around it too, around the steps like the hostas. And this is a, a plant of flower. I'm not sure the name of it, but it, my cousin Debbie shared it with Granny who then shared it with me. So I can't wait to see what that looks like. Then this area kind of up at the top of the steps, it's right in front of my kitchen window. I've been really excited about it for the past two or three years. I've really tried to make it a, a really beautiful flower bed. And maybe this year, I've, I've each year I get a little bit closer to what I, what I want. Uh, and this year definitely has improved things. You can see the petunias, some nasturtiums, some dianthus, some cosmos, another one of Katie's wonderful poppies that she's she's crazy about back there in the back got some calendula coming on again my anemone my september charm enemy is about took over here too i'm gonna have to definitely thin it out there's a different poppy and it just so self-sewed itself from last year so it's a really pretty one more dianthus my hostas my little miniature hostas are already blooming more calendula in the back, a little balloon flower that Granny gave me, a little daisy from the Satterfields. 
I used to have these growing all the time. It's like a pink feathery, um, I wanna say liatris, but that may not be right, something like that. But somehow over the years, they, I lost all of mine and I happened to see some at a store and I picked them up and planted them. So I'm glad to have those back. And then a couple of years ago, if you've been watching my videos, if you've not, you'll, I'll tell you the story. We were hiking up the creek and at one of the old home places, I've always noticed some flowers or what I thought was flowers growing there, but I've never been through there when they actually bloomed. Now, maybe that's because it's way too shaded now, you know, as the trees grew over the lifetime of when, when, whoever planted them. And they were at one of the oldest home places that we know that's up there. I only know that because Pap told me that's what his father told him. But finally, and I thought the whole time it was a daylily, but then this year when it started growing like this, I thought, no, maybe it's something else. And I just didn't know until it bloomed. But finally, finally, I have a bloom. And it is a daylily. It's just one of the orange ones that I see growing uh, along my, my road that I live on. They grow around Granny's house. But I love thinking about, did the ones down the road come from the same place this one did that was up the creek? Or did the ones down the road come from up the creek? You know, how did it get there? Because it's certainly not native. Uh, but it, isn't, it is lovely, even though it's just the same typical one that's orange. And recently I did a video that where I said a lot of people call irises flags. Well, someone told me that they called these flags. And when I thought about how they often are seen along the sides of the roads, I thought, well, that kind of makes sense that they're flagging by the side of the road. Anyway, whatever the color, I'm excited that I have it and that I know that it, it belonged to someone who walked the same paths I do, albeit over a hundred years ago, probably. I hope you enjoyed seeing how our garden is doing so far this year. Really exciting to see all the plants and think of the promise of the bounty that they're gonna produce for our family. Um, it's a wonderful thing to grow your own food. Also, especially interesting as gardeners to pay attention to small things, whether it's like the nasturtiums last year that I was so plum foolish about, and then this year I'm so excited they're doing equally as good. Katie being so excited about her poppy, I swear the girl checks it about 14 times a day. She's so excited, she can't wait until it actually blooms. Uh, it's wonderful to, to notice those little things and pay attention to them. If you watch one of our uh, recent videos, Matt and I, we were uh, talking about this apple tree that I'm sitting under and how we were disappointed that it didn't have apples on it. Well, once Matt, the video was over and we were walking into the house, Matt began to look and it had probably 25 apples on it. It obviously bloomed. Matt and I just didn't notice it, uh, obviously because it's got those apples. So, so many little things like that just enrich your life to pay attention to. Now, I know that everyone can't garden. I know that people don't have space like I do people don't have the physical ability they don't have the time but I just encourage you if you even if you just get one little container and put one little seed in it and just watch it you'll be better for it it'll inspire you in other ways that you don't even realize that you don't even think about growing food for your family is an amazing thing but even just watching something grow whether it's a, a little seed of a lettuce or maybe it's a seed of a flower of a sunflower a nasturtium whatever it is there's just something really um, about it that calls out to your soul. It's a really wonderful thing. I hope that you'll drop back by often this summer for my future garden tours. And you know, growing a garden for feeding your family is just such an amazing part of the culture of Appalachia. It's just an integral part of the way the culture is built around. That food, being close to the good earth, raising food to feed your family, it just plays a huge role. So that's why I like to celebrate it by sharing my garden and Matt's garden with you as we do garden tours and as we share the bounty and show you what we do with it and how we feed our family. It's just one of my favorite things to do and I hope you enjoy it as well.